Huskies. We're doing fine. We can't wait till this is over so we can get back to normal. We're just hanging out, making the best of it. Um, we just wanted to say hi and that we love and we miss everybody and we cannot wait until the quarantine is over so that we can all go back to church. So we miss you guys. Um, see you soon. Bye. 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 Greetings, everybody, from the Nye household. We are healthy and well, and we're keeping y'all in our prayers, and we pray that you guys stay healthy and well as well. Good morning, church. Good morning. We're coming to you live from Kokomo here, <laughs> dismissing you guys, wishing we could be with you uh, to, to worship the Lord this morning. But nevertheless, it is what it is, and we're doing what we can to go ahead and isolate and... and uh, Stay healthy, and I hope you all are doing the same. We love you, and we miss you, and we can't wait to see you all again. Hey, I just want to shout out real quick to all the kids, young and old, that come see me for Big Red Chewing Gum. Hang in there, guys. We'll be back in church as soon as this virus thing blows over. Remember, it's just for a season that we are going through this. So I want to encourage the church body for just a brief moment and, and share with you Joshua 1, 9, the Lord commands us. He says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And again, as I said, this is just for a season. So let us take advantage of it. Maybe you want to take this moment to sharpen your spiritual skills and hone them. Maybe you want to study some scripture verses so you're ready when we're allowed to get out and about and start witnessing to people so we can share the scriptures with them that the Lord, you know, puts upon our heart. So, and maybe it's not necessarily those scriptures, but something else. But again, I just want to encourage you just to, to take this time and make it useful. So in the meantime, I will see you guys once we get released from our quarantine. God bless, and I will see you then. Good morning. Welcome to our services here at Calvary Temple. What a blessing it is, what a privilege it is that we have to gather together. We may not be able to, to gather together uh, here in this building, uh, but we're gathered together in the name of Jesus, amen? And uh, wherever two or more are gathered together, the Lord is with us, hallelujah. What a blessing and privilege it is today. I just want to invite you uh, to share uh, you're on Facebook now. You're you're checking us out online, and what a what an amazing privilege it is to uh, to be able to to do that. You know, it's amazing that we have the technology that allows us uh, to do that. So please, as you're logging on, um, we invite you to share, uh, just to share and, and get the word out, encourage folks to um, to participate and to uh, to worship with us this morning. I'm going to start with a word of prayer. Gracious God, we are so thankful to have the opportunity to serve you, uh, Lord, today. We're, we're grateful and thankful for the opportunity to lift up our voices, to sing praise, to bring honor and glory to your name, Lord. Nothing can stop your people, Lord. We have a mind set that we're going to bring you honor and glory no matter what's going on in this world, and we're so thankful, Father, that you receive our praise. And so we're just asking you to be with us today. Minister to us, Holy Spirit. Work and move in each of our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name. The Bible says in Psalm 96, verses 2 through 7, Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Amen. Amen. Great are you, Lord, and mighty in strength. You are faithful, and you will never be a Lord. Praise you all of our days. It's for your glory we offer everything. Raise your hands, all you nations. Shout to God, all creation. How awesome is the Lord most high. Yes, you are, Lord. send us God we will go 
will trust you when you call our name. Where you lead us, we'll follow all the way. Raise your hands, all you nations. Shout to God, all creation.
Holy Spirit, let us see. When you speak, you scatter darkness. Light arrives and heaven opens. Holy Spirit, let us hear it. When you speak, the church awakens. We believe a change is coming. Holy Spirit, let us see it. Your name is power over darkness. Freedom for the captive. Mercy for the broken and the hopeless. Your name is faithful in the battle. Glory in the struggle. Mighty won't let us down or fail us. Your name is power. Yes, Lord. Your name is power. Your name is power, Lord. We're grateful. And we thank you that that's who you are. We thank you, Lord, that we can trust you in all things and in all ways. You make a way in all of our situations in all of our circumstances, in all of our trials. God, you are the way maker. And you're here and you're active and you're moving and you're working in each of our hearts, even this morning, even right now, as we're gathered together, wherever we are, we're gathered together in your name. And we can proclaim the truth today that your name is power, power over darkness, power over evil, power over sickness, power over death. Thank you, God, that that's who you are. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you, yes Lord, you are we may miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are we may miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, yes, Lord. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around I worship you I worship you you are here mending every heart I worship you I worship you you are way make miracle work and promise keep light in the dark who you are. Yes, Lord, you are. We make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are 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 Make miracle. 
miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. stop, you never stop working. Oh, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Oh Lord, we make miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are.
covered his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. When darkness sees on his unchanging grace in every high stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil thank you Lord that we can trust you Father, that in you alone there is strength and power. When darkness seems to hide your face, we know that you're with us. Thank you, God. Come on, right where you're at there in your home. Would you just worship the Lord with us right now in your own words? We're singing about Jesus, the cornerstone. Christ alone. Christ alone, our anchor. Our anchor. I want you to think about it. Come on, just lift your voice right there where you're at. Just lift your voice. You may want to lift your hands right where you're at. If you want to stand, just stand in his presence and just give him the glory and honor that he deserves. It's all about him this morning. It's all about him right now. We have an audience of one. Lord, we bless you. We bless you and we honor you. And as we just sang, Lord, you are our anchor. Even in the midst of what seems to be a a great storm in our world, Lord, we thank you that we have an anchor. And that anchor is you, Jesus. And we stay anchored in you. And we don't have to be battered and bashed and destroyed by the storm because we have an anchor in Jesus Christ. You're our cornerstone in Christ alone. Come on, that's it, church. Just lift your voice, lift your heart and bless him because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. We bless you, Lord. We give you praise on this Palm Sunday. On this Palm Sunday, when we remember the the fact that Jesus, when he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, and the wave branches were waved, the palm branches, and the people cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. On that triumphal entry into Jerusalem, they were blessing him and singing praises. And now on this day, we're still blessing him. We're still singing him praise because he's still the king. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And so we say today, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, we give you praise and glory and honor today. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy. And so, Lord, right now, I pray blessing over your people. Father, as folks are are tuning in from all over the place, Father, we say thank you. And I pray your blessing over each and every one. God, that you would meet every need of those that are watching. No matter what need they may have, Lord, as they give it to you right now in prayer, The Bible says, cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. So right there where you're at, give God whatever need that you might have. Don't carry it, give it to him. He's bigger than every problem. He's bigger than every sickness, every disease. Father, I speak your blessing over people right now that are watching. God, that you would do in their hearts and lives what only you can do. And Father, we give you the praise for that right now. We give you glory for that right now. And we thank you, God, 
for touching us and meeting us right where we are at. And Father, we give you all of the praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen, amen. Well, I want to welcome you this morning to our Sunday worship service, and uh, we're connecting with all of you online again this morning. As I said a moment ago, it is Palm Sunday, and we're moving into a powerful week, uh, Passion Week, as we head up to Easter Sunday, and uh, so I want to say thank you. As Chuck mentioned earlier, we want to encourage you to share this if you haven't already, We want to connect with as many people as we can and uh, to spread the good news of Jesus. So help us with that. Also, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and type in the comments uh, where you are watching from. We would love to know who all that we are connecting with this morning. And so type that in the comments where you're you're watching from uh, so that we can know who is with us. Uh, Before we get into announcements, I want to just share something this morning. Uh, As we were just uh, connecting with people over the phone and making phone calls this week and checking on so many of you, uh, we know one of the common things that we keep hearing is, folks, I miss being with my church family. I miss seeing one another. And so that's one of the reasons we brought you a few of those greeting videos at the top of the service Uh, But also, I want to just encourage you that we may not be able to gather in one place, but we don't have to be completely disconnected. So I'm going to give you a couple of things to encourage you to do, starting with your church family, and you can do this with other people as well. But I'm going to encourage you to, as best as you can, to stay connected with the body of Christ. Stay connected with your church family. One of the ways you can do that, pick up the phone this week. Your phone is an extremely powerful tool that you have right now that you can still connect with people. So I'm going to encourage you, get out. If you're part of Calvary Temple family, you should have a church directory. Get out your phone and call a few people this week. And just encourage them in the Lord. Just check on them. See how they're doing. And uh, you may have some other friends and family. Pick up the phone. Call them and get on the phone and connect with some people this week. Um, write a letter. Write a letter. We, we received, uh, my family and I received a, a handwritten letter from one of the um, young teenage boys in the church here this week just writing us. And that meant so much to us. And uh, so sit down, write a letter to some folks, write a card, send a text. Uh, uh, There's so many ways that we can connect, uh, even though you might be able to see somebody face to face. I want to encourage you uh, folks to do that this week and to connect with people. Uh, You may have no idea how much that means to someone. You can be an encouragement. Check on them. See, See if somebody needs something or something that you can do for them. And that goes a long, long way. Now, I want to give you a couple of announcements, and we're going to put these on the screen. And so pay very close attention. Uh, This Monday night, tomorrow night at 7 p.m., right here on this same platform, uh, we're going to stream live uh, what we're calling Bible Trivia Game Night. And... uh, My son Tyler is going to be hosting that, and he's going to lead that. And it's going to be a fun, interactive time for the whole family. And so just a fun time that we can connect together. And this is open to anyone that's watching, anyone you can share this. Anybody can log into that. But 7 o'clock tomorrow night, Bible Trivia Game Night. And uh, you're going to have you're going to be able to be involved. Everyone who's watching is going to be able to play and interact, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and so you're going to want to tune in for that tomorrow evening. And then Wednesday evening at 6:30, we're going to be online again uh, for our normal at our normal time, 6:30, for our midweek Bible study. And uh, we have been going through a study entitled "Wisdom for Everyday Living." And so we've been having a powerful time in the Word on Wednesday night. And so log in uh, Wednesday night at 6.30. We want to encourage you to do that. And then the next announcement is this. This Friday is Good Friday. Good Friday. And uh, there's going to be a, uh, a good, we're going to have a Good Friday service that will air at noon uh, this Friday right here on this same platform here on Facebook Live. 
And uh, we want to encourage you to tune in at noon on Friday. Uh, and it's going to be a time of worship, a time of word. Uh, we got some, uh, just some special things that it's going to be powerful. And also we're going to have a time of communion. And so I'm going to encourage you that uh, to have uh, some, uh, some elements so that you'll be able to partake of communion, have some juice and a cracker or some bread, something. Um, and uh, during that service, we're going to be t partaking of communion together. Uh, and so online, right here at noon on Friday on Facebook, it's going to be a powerful time as we remember the work of Christ on the cross. Uh, and then, of course, next Sunday will be Easter Sunday, and we're going to worship together online and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And then I want to encourage you also this morning, the information's on the screen of how you can give. And so I want to encourage you to still be faithful in worshiping the Lord with your tithes and with your offerings. And uh, you can see the information on the screen. You can go to the website. Uh, the number is on the screen. You can text to give, text the keyword uh, give and then the amount, uh, or if you're given to missions, you can text the keyword missions and then the amount, and all of those keywords are on the website as well. And so I want to encourage you, or you can mail in. We've had folks mailing in their tithes and offerings just to the, to the church here, and you can do that as well. So thank you for your faithfulness, your continued faithfulness in your giving and your tithes. And so I want to take this moment while that information is on the screen, and I just want us to pray, and some of you may want to just choose to give right now at this moment as an, as an act of worship unto the Lord. So, Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have to worship you with our giving, with tithes and offerings. Lord, the, the Bible says the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And so, Lord, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to give unto you, and we worship you. And uh, Lord, we're going to continue to worship you with song again right now, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Every It's a heavy weight by chance as I lie awake and wonder what the future holds. Help me to remember that you're in control. You're my courage when I worry in the dead of night. You're my strength because I'm not strong enough to I will lift my arms, I will lift my cares, lay them in your hands, and I'll leave them there. When the wind and waves are coming, you shelter me, even though I'm in the storm, the storm is not in
Hallelujah. Thank God for his power. As you just saw in that video, the power of God. And, and uh, we serve a God whose power is unlimited. And I want to invite you this morning to get your Bibles out. And we're going to go to Matthew 16. I hope you have your Bibles with you. And I'm going to encourage you to stay with me. Over the next few moments, stay tuned in because I got a word, I believe a word from God uh, to share with us this morning that I believe is going to be life transforming. And so I want to encourage you just to stay with me this morning. I know it can be easy to get distracted while you're at home and other things around you, but try to stay tuned in because I don't want you to miss this and share this because we want to get this word out to as many, many people as possible. And I thank God for his word. Hallelujah. Thank God. So as you're turning to Matthew 16, I want you to repeat this after me. And would you say the word of God is the wisdom of God. The word of God is the will of God. And the word of God is the revelation of God. And uh, I trust that you believe that. Get that down in your spirit. Thank God for his word. Matthew chapter 16. And we're going to begin reading verse number 13. Matthew 16, 13. And if you would, someone just type that reference in the comments. And as folks are watching this, that will help everyone. Matthew 16, beginning with verse 13, it says, And when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? Now I want you to notice as we're reading this text how many times the word say is mentioned. So Jesus said, Who do people say the Son of Man is? Verse 14 They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? There's that word say. Who do you say, he said to his disciples. And Simon Peter, verse 16, Simon Peter answered, he said, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. I will give you, verse 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And I just pray today, Lord, over the next few moments that you would speak to our heart and transform our life that we might be more like Jesus. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, as I've been going through this week and just praying and, and, and striving to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, there's a word that's been stirring in my spirit this week, and that is the word authority. Authority. Somebody type that word in the comments. Authority. Authority. That word has been stirring in my spirit. And as I've just been meditating on that and been saying, okay, Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say to me? You see, sometimes when God speaks to you, speaks to your spirit, he'll start with one word. And then you need to pray that out and say, okay, Lord, what are you saying? What are you getting at? And the Lord began to expound that. But that word, authority. We all know what authority is. All you kids that are watching right now, thank you for being in church this morning, even though maybe you get to be in your pajamas. But all you kids that are watching right now, you know what authority is. Right? Your parents are your authority. In other words, they tell you to do something You have to do it. You're supposed to do it. Why? Because you're under their authority, right? They have authority as your parents to say, hey, 
you got to go clean your room. They have authority as your parents to say, hey, it's time. Come sit down at the table with us as a family. We're going to eat because they're authority. All right? All you adults, we know what authority is. We go to work. We have a boss, right? We have someone that's in authority over us. They tell us, you've got to be here at a certain time. We've got to be there at a certain time. Why? Because authority told us. And so I begin thinking about that word authority. And in this, in this passage we just read, Jesus talks about authority. Now, the word authority is not used, but I'm going to show you in a moment how he's talking about authority. But the first thing I want you to realize is this. In this passage of Scripture, Jesus refers to two different kingdoms. And he refers to it in verse number 18. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it, or some translations say, will not prevail against it. So there's two kingdoms, two kingdoms that Jesus mentions here. The kingdom of darkness, because he says the term hell. That's the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of the world. And then there's the kingdom of God represented by the church. So he said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. So there's two kingdoms. And notice that the kingdom of darkness opposes the church. The kingdom of darkness led by Satan, led by the devil, tries to come against, tries to resist the kingdom of God and those who are in the kingdom of God. If you're born again, you are, you are a part of God's kingdom. If you're not serving Jesus then you're not a part of God's kingdom. You're still ruled over by sin and by darkness. And so we see that there's two kingdoms, and the opposing kingdom is the kingdom led by Satan, and he tries to come against and stop the kingdom of God. But here Jesus said, I'll build my church, and the, church, the gates of hell will not overcome it. In other words, the church will overcome the works of darkness. Or let me say it this way. The true church, the body of Christ, is stronger than the kingdom of darkness. Stronger than the work of the enemy. You and I are stronger. Stronger. We have the power of God in us. Now notice what Jesus says here. Why is it that the church, now stay with me because we're going somewhere. Why is it that the church overcomes? Why is it that the gates of hell, even though it may try, cannot overcome, cannot prevail against the church? Here's the reason why Jesus said it in the very next verse. In verse 19, he said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. All right, now, I have here in my hand keys. Keys represent authority, all right? Represent authority. Now, if you, if you uh, come to my house, uh, you don't have a key to my house. And if the door's locked, you can't get in. You don't have authority to walk into the house. But I have a key to the door of my house. I have authority. I can walk into my house. I can walk out of my house as I want to. I can keep those out of my house that I don't want in my house. I have authority. The same thing with your car. Not just anybody has authority to get in your car and to drive your car. But you have the keys. You have authority. So Jesus says the reason the kingdom of darkness cannot overcome the church, cannot overcome you. Why? Because he said, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. Or in other words, I've given you authority. As a representative of the kingdom of God, you have authority. Now think about this. In Colossians 1.13, it talks about when we're born again, when we're forgiven, we've been rescued or delivered from the dominion of darkness. Dominion speaks of rule and authority. So before we're saved, darkness, sin, 
the enemy rules and reigns over us. When we are saved, Christ rescues us. We're redeemed. We're delivered out from under the dominion of darkness. And now we rule and reign with Christ. And as we said, he's given us authority. Put in the comments. Somebody just comment that in there. I have authority in Christ. Come on, put that in there. I have authority in Christ. Now, I'm going to show you in a moment why that's so important and how that applies to what we're walking through in our world right now. Very, very important. So stay with me because we're, 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 we're building up to that. But in Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul is praying for the church and he talks about how that Jesus... After he rose from the dead, we're going to celebrate that next Sunday. But after Jesus rose from the dead, he was seated in heavenly places. And it says he has all power and all authority and all dominion and everything else is under his feet. And so Christ rose from the dead. He's now seated at the, uh, next, at the right of the Father. And he has all authority over the enemy. But here's what's powerful. If you go to the next chapter in Ephesians chapter 2, it says in verse 6, And God raised us up. This is when we're born again. If you read the previous verses, you'll see this. When we're born again, Ephesians 2, 6 says, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus. So in other words, even though we're on this earth, spiritually speaking, as born-again believers, you and I have been raised up with Christ. And we are right now seated with Christ in heavenly realms. And that means all authority and all dominion over the works of darkness. Hallelujah. Get that in your spirit. Get that in your spirit this morning. Understand who you are and your place in Christ. That's why in Luke 9, 1, Jesus said to his disciples, he said I, he gave them power and authority. Look at that. Luke 9, 1, Jesus gave his disciples power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. That's powerful. That's powerful. In Mark 16, verses 17 and 18, these signs will follow those who believe. Talking about believers, people of God. In my name, they will drive out demons. Why? Because you have authority. They'll speak in new tongues. They'll pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they shall recover. They will get well. Why? Because he's given us power and authority even over sickness and disease in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want you to think about that this morning. Jesus said, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. Picture that. Picture that Jesus handing you keys. And now that you have keys, he says, whatever is bi you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Christ has given you and I authority. There's that word authority. He's given you and I authority to preach the gospel. He's given you and I authority to cast out devils. He's given you and I authority to heal the sick. He's given you and I authority to come against the works of darkness. It's not who we are. It's who we are in Jesus. It's the power of God working through us. He's the Savior. He's the Deliverer. He's the one who heals. But He desires to work through us. That's why He gives us power and authority. And when we walk in authority, we release God's power. Think about that. Jesus, uh, excuse me, Peter and John went to the, the temple at the hour of prayer in Acts 3. And, and Peter and John look at the lame man and they said, look at us. And the lame man looked at them expecting to get something. And what does it say? 
Peter and John said, silver and gold have I none. But they said, what we do have, I give you. Now notice this. They said, in the name of Jesus. They were speaking. That's where their authority lies. In the name, or they could say, in the authority of the name of Jesus. They said, get up and walk. Why? What gave them the right to look at a man who had been lame since birth and to speak, get up and walk? It wasn't arrogance, it was a confidence, understanding who God is and who they are. And so they said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk in the authority of Jesus Christ. And the man gets up and he begins to walk and leap and praise God. And from that moment forth, he walked in strength under his own power and never had to beg another day in his life. Why? Because Peter and John operated. They understood what they had. Think about this this morning. You and I, if we're not careful, we can serve Jesus but not realize what we have. Not realize the keys that maybe were in our pocket the whole time. And, 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 and it's, like, it's like walking up to uh, your house and not, and, and not realizing that the key's in your pocket and you think there's some and you can't get in. Not realizing the whole time you could have got in because you had the authority there in your pocket. Listen, we need to understand who we are in Jesus as born again believers. And then we need to remain in Christ. And understand the power and authority that we have. Now Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5 that we are Christ's ambassadors. Now stay with me because I'm going to share with you a powerful story in just a few moments. So don't go anywhere. I'm going to give you a powerful story. But 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Paul says we are Christ's ambassadors ambassadors. Now think about this for just a moment. An ambassador represents a nation, their home nation, in a foreign land. We are Christ ambassadors. In other words, we are actually citizens of heaven, but right now we're foreigners on this earth. We're living here, but we are ambassadors of the kingdom of God in a foreign place in this world. But think about an ambassador. An ambassador that's sent is fully backed and fully funded by their homeland, by their home nation. You and I, listen to me, those of you that are watching, as a child of God, as an ambassador of Christ, you can count on this. As you remain in Christ, you are fully backed, all the power, all the authority of heaven, and fully funded. So right now, the economy may seem unstable and uneasy. Some of you watching are laid off work right now or maybe have lost your job. But as people who are in Christ, remember this, your source is in Him. And we live according to God's economy. And when we walk in Him, He will always take care of us somehow, some way. But you're also fully backed by the kingdom of God. All the power, all the authority of heaven is behind you and we're to walk in that. Oh hallelujah. Come on somebody, somebody say amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. But we have to remain in Christ. We have to walk and remain in Christ. Now I'm going to pull all of this together. You say pastor how does this relate to what we're walking through as a nation? Well I'm going to tell you right now. In this hour, we live in a very critical hour, and this is a critical hour for the church to be the church. Hear me very carefully. Everybody listen very carefully to what I'm getting ready to say in the next few moments. In this hour, the church must be the church. And we must stand and walk in the power and the authority that we have in Christ. Now, this is important to understand. Our authority is expressed through the words that we say. Peter and John, in Acts 3, he said to the man, in the name of Jesus, and he said the words, get up and walk. Our authority 
is expressed through the words that we say. Now think about this. Anything that is under authority, anything that is under authority must listen when authority speaks. So children, when your parents speak, You're supposed to listen because they're expressing their authority. They're giving their orders. They're giving their instructions through their words. Anything under authority must listen when authority speaks. Jesus ministered to the centurion in the Gospels about his servant who was sick. And the centurion said, Jesus, just speak the word and my servant will be healed. He said, because I understand authority. I have people under me. I say, go here and do this, and they do it. So he said, Jesus, all you got to do is speak it, and sickness has to leave my servant's body. And Jesus said, I've never seen anyone with such great faith. Why? Because the centurion understood authority. And so our authority is expressed through the words that we speak. Or the Bible says it this way in the Old Testament. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. So in this season, your words, my words can bring life or they can bring death. As a child of God, when we listen in this season to the words that are being spoken, and when our our president speaks and he says, as he said in the last few hours, that that it looks like according to the numbers that we're we're walking into a a, a very uh, critical, the next week or two, they say could be peak and we could see a lot of death. And that's what they're saying. And they're saying that because that's what the numbers are showing. But remember, I taught two weeks ago, there's a difference between facts and truth. Facts are real. Yes, the numbers are real. The numbers are showing. But as people of God, we can do one of two things. We can allow our heart to be full of fear and panic, and that will come out of us, and we'll speak words that just uh, uh, words of death, or we can rise up and let faith rise up within us, and in the authority of Christ, we need to speak to this virus. In the authority of Christ as people of God, we need to speak and we need to pray, and we we need to speak and pray for the virus to stop spreading. We can speak up and say, I know what the numbers say, but as quickly as it came, we speak to the virus and we command it to go. And we begin to pray and say, yes, I know what the numbers are saying, but we believe God through the power and the authority of Jesus that not that many people will die. We speak life, not death in Jesus' name. Our words can bring life or death. Our words can build up. Or they can tear down. We need to ask ourselves as the church, what is coming out of our mouth in this hour? And what comes out of our mouth is what is in our heart. What we truly believe comes out of our, what's coming out of our mouth? Is it just words of fear and panic? Or is it words of of faith? Words of healing, words of life. That's why we got to get that down in our spirit. So what's coming out of us are words that we're speaking in the authority of Jesus and we're declaring the word and we're speaking life in Jesus' name. We need to rise up and take authority over this virus. We need to rise up and continue to take authority over a spirit of fear. Can I tell you, the enemy... The enemy wants to use this, and he is, to, to, uh, to uh, plague this world with a spirit of fear and worry and panic. We need to rise up in the authority of Christ and stand against the spirit of fear. And we need to take authority over destruction. Understand this. Understand this. Hear me very carefully. As the church that's been given the keys of the kingdom. We're still in this earth for a reason. We have a very important role to play in all of this that's going on. A very important role. Now, I know our lives may look different, and we're doing different things and using wisdom and and looking out and and doing what's best for everybody. That's fine. We heed heed the instructions of our government leaders. All of that's good. We need to do that. But we need to understand That as the church, we have a very important role to play. Actually, probably as the church, we have the most important role to play. Because the church, in the authority and the power of Christ, 
has the ability and the opportunity to help see this thing get better, not worse. Think about that. We have the most important. We've got to pray. We've got to pray. And in the name of Jesus, come against this stuff. Come against the works of darkness. Come against the works of... Your prayer has power. We got to speak to the mountain. I want to read a passage real quickly, and then I'm going to tell you two powerful stories, and then we're going to pray together. But in Mark 11, beginning with verse 22, Jesus said, have faith in God. He said, truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, notice what he said, if anyone says to this mountain, talking about somebody who has faith in God, if you say to this mountain, well, what's our mountain right now? We've got some big mountains in front of us. The virus, economic problems, destruction, fear, these obstacles that seem to stand in our way. Jesus said, have faith in God. I tell you, if anyone says, why say? Because authority is expressed through our words. I taught you that a few moments ago. We've got to take what's in our heart and we've got to release that through the words that we speak. If anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea. And does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Notice that. We've got to believe it in our heart. We can't just say whatever, but it's words that are linked with what we believe. And out of a heart full of faith that's in Christ, we speak words of authority that we believe, that we're confident in. And he says, what you say, it will be done for you them and then in verse uh, 24 therefore Jesus said I tell you whatever whatever you ask for in prayer believe that you have received it and it will be yours and he says and when you stand praying if you hold anything against anyone forgive them so that your father in heaven may forgive your sins. Why is that? Because if we allow unforgiveness or any sin to have its way in our life it will cause us to relinquish or to give up the authority that we have. But he says you can say to this mountain, go throw yourself. And whatever you say, and not doubt, but believe in your heart, he says it will happen. It will be done for them. So church, we need to rise up in the authority of Jesus Christ. Understand who he is and the power and the authority. And we need to pray. In just a moment, we're going to pray, and we're going to continue to pray and speak against the works of the enemy because the church can, uh, excuse me, the the church, uh, the, the works of darkness will not prevail against the church. Now watch this. I'm going to tell you a story in just a minute. We need to get mad at the devil and stand in authority. Now, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask them to put the slide on the screen. I shared this on Friday during one of our day of prayer sessions. I shared this on the screen. You'll see this is a prophecy that the Lord spoke to David Wilkerson, great man of God who went home to be with the Lord a few years back. In 1986, the Lord spoke this prophecy. And you see it there on the screen. And it talks about how that there was a a plague that's going to come over the the world. And it talks about how it will hit New York City. Of course, we see New York City is one of the hot spots right now. And in that prophecy, all the way back in 1986, he said it will cause prayerless believers to begin to pray again. It will cause believers to get back into the Bible. It will cause the man of God in the pulpit to speak repentance. But notice what he said in that prophetic word. He said, but out of it will come a third great awakening. Hallelujah. He said, out of it will come a third great awakening. I want you to understand. You can bring that back to me now. I want you to understand this. God said in his word, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
God desires to do something great in the midst of a dark hour, but it all depends on whether we be the church and we rise up and we be the church in the authority, in the power of Christ. We come against the works of darkness. We need to pray for those that are sick. I've got some good friends that are battling the virus right now and they're sick and they're in death and I've been praying for them this week and taking authority over sickness and disease. We've got to do that. We need to pray for people. We need to, we need to reach out and encourage people and come against the spirit of fear in Jesus name we need to get mad at the devil and we say enough is enough and we're going to stand in the gap as a church we're still here for a reason we're going to stand in the gap and we're going to say God we repent God we know our nation has sinned but God we ask you to move upon the hearts of people that people would still come into the kingdom of God in Jesus name we need to get mad and stand in authority I remember several years ago, my wife, in a moment's notice, became very sick with extreme severe pain shooting through her head nonstop. I mean, just one moment she was fine. The next moment she was on the floor in severe pain. And we got her to the emergency room. And they got her some medication and we were praying and she got to where she had some uh, some relief and she was asleep on the table in the emergency room and for a few moments it was just me and her in there and the doctors and nurses had stepped out and I remember I began to I begin to walk around that table and I begin to walk around it as she was laying there and I found myself up out of my spirit came this song I began to sing I command you Satan in the name of the Lord take up your weapons and flee for the Lord has given me authority to march all over thee. And I walked around that emergency room as she's sleeping on that gurney. And I walked around it singing that and praying that and declaring that. Because we need to say, no, 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 devil. You're not going to have your way. I come against it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to I wanna tell you this story that I told you I was going to tell you. Some of you have maybe heard me share this before. But I felt to share it this morning because it, it represents what we're talking about. Many of you are familiar with a, a great man of God by the name of Dr. Lester Summerall who went home to be with the Lord several years ago. He, uh, in the later years of his life, pastored a church just north of here in South Bend, Indiana. But a missionary evangelist that went around the world. And this story, which is a true story, happened like this. One day, Dr. Lester Summerall, many years ago, found himself in the middle of the Central American rainforest ministering. And as he went about his ministry in that region, he came across a witch doctor. In one hand, the witch doctor would hold a bullfrog, which was a symbol of satanic power. And in the other hand, a mixture of human blood and alcohol. And they would, he would, the rich doctor would place the, the blood and the alcohol in the frog's mouth. And then the witch doctor would dance and make satanic incantations and worship demon entities. Well, Dr. Summerall, follower of Jesus Christ and understood the power of and the authority that he had in Jesus. So full of the Holy Spirit. He goes over and he places his hands on the side of the witch doctor's head. And he said two words. Remember our authority is expressed through the words that we speak. You got to release that. He said two words. He said come out. He said those two words. He laid his hands on. He said come out. And the witch doctor, true story, fell over on the ground with a thud. And when that witch doctor returned to his feet, he was born again, began to speak in a heavenly language and glorified God and was set free by the power of God. Why? Because Lester Summerall understood the authority that he had and he stepped in and did something about it and Jesus worked through him and cast the devil out of that man. Well, here's the rest of the story. Later that night, 
Dr. Summerall returned to his room to go to bed. It was warm. It was, he's in, the, in that region. It was warm. And no air conditioning. So he opens up the windows to the room to get some fresh air into the room while he slept. And as he lay there, all of a sudden, a strange, foul odor entered the room. And all of a sudden, the heat in the air disappeared from the room and a damp chill filled the place. So it became cold. So now there's a foul odor. Now it's cold. And Dr. Summerall began to shiver. All of a sudden, a wind began to blow. And the curtains on the rods began to, to, to shake around and wave wildly. And then the bed that he was laying in began to shake and it shook so violently that it moved with him in it. The bed moved all the way across the room out into the middle of the floor. But Dr. Summerall had enough. He recognized it was this demonic spirit that he cast out of the man earlier that it was coming to come against him. And he raised up in his bed and he said, because you've got to speak it. He said, you demon spirit, I recognize you. I cast you out earlier today. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he said, you go now. And immediately the evil presence left the room. The heat returned. The curtains quit blowing. And the horrible smell left the room. Now right there would be a moment to shout and say, thank God, and the spirit left authority, thank God. But Dr. Summerall took it a step further. He rose back up in his bed, he looked out the window, and he shouted. He said, hey devil, he said, get back in here. Get back in here. And immediately, true story, he says the curtains began to stick out and blow in the wind. And the cold returned. The smell returned. The bed began to shake violently again and almost shook him out of the bed. Dr. Summerall stood up in his bed and he said, Devil, when I came into this room, my bed was against that wall. He said, now in the name of Jesus, he said, put it back. And the bed went shaking back across the room, settled against the wall where it began. And Dr. Summerall said, now get out of here. And the demonic spirit left. Now that seems like a story that to many of you may seem too hard to believe. But it's a true story. And it represents the authority that we have when we are in Jesus Christ. Not every person, but those that are born again, those that are full of the Holy Spirit and remain in Christ. You're a representative of Jesus Christ, and we have authority. And the enemy in this hour wants to steal from you, wants to take things from you that God has intended for you. And we need to stand up in the authority of Jesus and stand in the gap and pray over this nation and say, devil, you're not going to have your way as many as you would desire to have. We're going to stand in the gap. Devil, take your hands off of this country. Take your hands off of this leader. Our leaders, we come against and stand, and we come against the spirit of fear. We come against disease and sickness. We come against coronavirus in the authority of the name of Jesus. And that's why I said a few moments ago, the church has a critical role to play in this hour. We actually have the most important role to play. And referring back to our text, Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Why? Because he said, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. Authority. Authority. I'm going to encourage you. While Chuck just begins to play, I'm going to encourage you right there where you're at. All of us, let's just begin to lift our voice, and let's thank God for his word. Come on, can we do that? God's doing a work right now. God's doing a work right now in hearts and lives. God's speaking to people right now. I've released this word that God put on my heart. And God's stirring our hearts. And he's building up faith within us right now. In the name of Jesus, I want you to begin to thank God right where you're at. Thank God for his word. Come on, thank God for his word. Thank God for his word. Thank God that you're born again. If you're born again, thank God for that. 
If you're not born again, you're not saved, then I want to encourage you that are watching, that are not following Jesus, you know your life is not right with God, then I want to encourage you right where you're at. The Bible says all who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You don't have to, you can't earn salvation. It doesn't matter what you've done. The Bible says if you'll confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us. If you'll repent, turn your back on sin and turn to Jesus and say, Lord, I give you my life. I turn from sin. I don't serve sin any longer. I'm going to serve you, Jesus. I receive your forgiveness. If you'll call out to him right now, in this moment, he'll save you and you'll be born again in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, thank him for salvation. Thank him for salvation. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, I ask and pray that you would fill every one of your followers that right now that are a part of this service, that are watching this, that are with us, every follower of Jesus Christ, right now, God, that you would fill afresh and anew with your Holy Spirit. Empower, I pray, a fresh outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon people right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, oh, Holy Spirit, saturate that home. Saturate that family room. Saturate that bedroom, that car, wherever people are at right now. Fill them fresh and anew with the Holy Ghost, a fresh empowering, a fresh enabling. Lord, we remain in you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for it. We receive it right now. We receive your touch right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. Come on, worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray in just a moment. Chuck's, Chuck's playing that song, Waymaker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Lord, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. I feel the presence of God right now. Hallelujah. Come on. He hasn't stopped working. He's working in your life. He's working in your home. He's working in our city. He's working in our nation. Don't lose sight of the fact God is working. Hallelujah. Even when I don't see it, Lord, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, Lord, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Hallelujah. He's not stopping working. Why? Because he has a people that are still praying. He has a, still, a people that are still doing the work of the Lord, that are proclaiming the gospel. God's working through his church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now I want you to begin to pray right there where you're at. Man of God, woman of God, I want you to begin to pray. Pray over your family. Pray over your neighbors and your friends. Come on, pray over this nation. Pray over our community. In the authority of the name of Jesus. That's it, come on. In Jesus' name, in that authority, we are fully backed by the kingdom of God. We come against and pray against this virus. Lord, this virus is not of God because sickness and disease does not come from God. So we stand in the gap right now and we come against it. And I pray, God, that as quick as it came, that it would go in Jesus' name. I pray, God, that the death toll would not rise, but it would begin to decline in Jesus' name. I pray, God, that the spreading of it would stop 
in Jesus' name. I pray, God, that hospitals, instead of continuing to get fuller, I pray they begin to be able to be, start emptying in Jesus' name. I pray that all the equipment that the numbers are showing we're going to need, I pray, God, that we wouldn't end up needing it because folks would begin to get better and better and better and better in Jesus' name. We pray for miracles. Miracles. We pray over those, God, that are sick right now. Those that are on ventilators, breathing machines right now. We speak healing over their bodies. Come on, call out the names of people right now that you know that are sick in body. With whatever it is they're sick with, would you pray over them right now? Take authority over that sickness. Take authority over that disease. In the name of Jesus, we curse sickness and disease. And we speak health right now over their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. And we receive it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Come on, I want you to go ahead and type in the comments. As you're praying right now, type in the comments what you're believing God for. Come on, type in there. Make faith declarations. Declare by faith. Declare by faith right now. What are you believing God? What's God saying? What are you praying for? What's God going to do? Declare it by faith in the comments. Declare it by faith in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's it. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it by faith. Declare it by faith in the name of Jesus. Declare it by faith in the name of Jesus. I know we're just, we're just taking liberty and taking time because I believe God's doing something right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, yeah, someone's saying sickness, flee right now in Jesus' name. Yes, yeah, someone's proclaiming great awakening across the nation. Someone's proclaiming right now healing and strength. Yes, yeah, someone's proclaiming right now healing for our nation. That's it, church. Come on, proclaim by faith. What's God stirring in your spirit? This is one way that you can speak it right now. Yes, they're speaking protection and healing and miracles. Revival for our nation. There it is. People are just declaring it. Protection. Wellness. Protection of our medical personnel. Yes, we speak that and we pray that in the name of Jesus. Healing for all who are ill. Yes, someone's proclaiming mighty rush of the Holy Spirit around the world. Someone's proclaiming no fear in Jesus' name. That's it. Come on, declare it. Speak it. Declare it. I feel that right now in Jesus' name. Save my brothers and sisters. That's, they're declaring it. They're declaring it. Rebuke fear and panic and depression. That's it. Speak it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Someone declares by faith the COVID population at the hospital she works at decreased today. Yes, today. The number of new cases decrease in Jesus' name. Someone declares salvation to those who are saved. Someone's declaring the peace of Christ in our hearts. Someone's declaring healing. Yes, Dion's declaring healing over my wife, Brenda. We come into agreement right now. Jeff declares, make us bolder, Lord. That's it, Lord. Enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Hallelujah. Someone declares, they said, in my spirit, I see God's hand spread over all the earth. Healing is taking place. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Someone says salvation of loved ones and see it, they're being filled with the Holy Spirit. James says we shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. My mom says, and I come into agreement, healing for Parkinson for my dad. I speak it and I declare it in authority of Jesus. I take authority of you and we command Parkinson's to go in Jesus' name. Someone declares our nation will turn back to Christ. 
All suicidal thoughts go in Jesus' name. That's it. Folks are declaring it. Folks are declaring it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We speak forth the will of God. We speak it forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Now I want you to begin to praise him now one more time. Come on, begin to thank him in advance. Begin to thank him in advance for what he's doing. Begin to thank him in advance for these things that we're proclaiming. They're going to come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah, I feel that in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Mental health, healing, and wholeness to those who are suffering. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Some of you are watching right now and you're battling discouragement. You're battling depressed. I'm, I'm here to tell you, last night, my wife can confirm this. Last night, I just felt a heaviness come over me. And I just felt discouraged. I told my wife, I said, I'm just, I just feel discouraged tonight. That's the enemy. The enemy wants to overcome us, wants us to be discouraged. I went to bed and I woke up this morning praising the Lord. And I said, discouragement go in Jesus' name. I understand who I am in Jesus. Hallelujah. I begin to put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah. Now I feel like shouting and dancing. Amen. But some of you are battling discouragement. You're feeling all alone because you've been isolated. I'm going to encourage you. God is with you. I'm going to encourage you. Put on praise. I'm going to encourage you. Bless the Lord at all times. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. People are continuing to proclaim. Declare it by faith in the comments. But I'm going to encourage you, and I speak this in Jesus' name. We will get through this. God's going to see us through this. And as I declared last Sunday, I believe it, that we're getting ready to move into a season of accelerated ministry. So get ready. Use this as a time to rest in the Lord. Use this as a time, as Andrew challenged us in that video earlier in the service, to renew your spirit, man. Get strong in the Lord once again. Get ready because there's still a work for you and I to do in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes, Patsy, thank you for your prayers. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Whew, hallelujah. I feel this today. I feel this today. Authority in Jesus Christ. Understand who you are in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Someone says, can't you just feel those Holy Spirit goosebumps? Hallelujah. The presence of God right there where we're at. Glory, 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 glory. I know we've just lingered here. That's okay. We sit down and watch a movie for two or three hours and don't think anything about it. We got all day. Amen. Hallelujah. God's moving in hearts and lives. God is moving in Jesus' name. Just receive the touch of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We worship you, Lord. I worship you. Oh, I worship you, Lord. You are here, moving in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Someone says, I love feeling his presence right here in our living room. That's right, folks. He's right there where you're at. In Jesus' mighty name, lift your hands toward heaven. Receive a touch from the Lord right now in the name of Jesus. You young people, you children that are watching, that's the presence of God. Lift your hands and let him touch you right there where you're at in Jesus' name. God cares about you and he loves you. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to your name, glory to your name, glory to your name, glory to your name.
Now here's what I'm going to encourage you to do. Here's what I'm going to encourage you to do. This week, Jesus said in John 15, he said, abide in me. He said, apart from me, you can do nothing. When we talk about walking in authority, we have to, we have to remain in Christ. Our authority is in him. We get outside of him, we're nothing. We need to stay true to God. Don't compromise on sin. Repent of any sin in your life. Be faithful to God. Walk in him. I'm going to encourage you. And he said, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it shall be done. So understand, we got to stay in the word. Because as we stay in the word, faith rises up within our heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of that faith, we begin to speak with authority. So I'm going to encourage you, be in the word this week. Connect with God every day. Some of you have more time than what you normally have, so there's no excuse. Be in the Word. Be in the Word. Spend time every day in prayer. Stay in an attitude of prayer. You may want to pick some time, as we challenged you last week, pick some time this week maybe to do some fasting and praying. There's things that you and I can do. Pick up the phone. Call somebody. I I was on the phone this week praying with people over the phone. Praying. Praying. Call somebody and pray for them. Release, release the healing power of Jesus over that phone. Release encouragement. Speak life to somebody this week. So can, walk in the word. Walk in prayer. Let the Lord speak through you. Stay in tune with the Holy Spirit. We have a role to play in this church as we walk in the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. I want you to stay encouraged. I want you to stay encouraged. You can keep worshiping the Lord all day long. Stay encouraged. This is an incredible week we're moving into leading up to Easter. Friday, remember at noon, we're going to air a, on right here online a, a communion service. It's going to be a powerful time. Good Friday service, noon this Friday, leading up to Easter Sunday. But I'm going to encourage you this week. Be encouraged. God's with you. God's going to see us through. Let's come against this thing in Jesus' mighty name. In just a moment, I'm going to have Chuck to sing us out, if he would. And he's going to worship the Lord. But I'm going to encourage you to make sure tomorrow night, online, 7 o'clock, there's going to be a time of fellowship with the body of Christ. Anyone who wants to join for that Bible trivia time tomorrow night at 7. But let's worship the Lord. Stay in an attitude of worship today. We love you. God bless you. Chuck's going to sing this. Let's continue to declare it by faith. God's doing great things. You are way big, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way big, miracle worker, promise keeper. In the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way make miracle work, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Who? <laughs>